your Yagami uh, uh, tenor, constitutional tenor ends. And until otherwise anything happens, uh, President uh, Ada, uh, Alex Paro will become the valid president of the Gambia. Jukwemeka is a of one up. Thanks for talking to us on the program. The UN says it's pleased that all sides in the political crisis in the Democratic Republic of Congo have finally agreed a deal that can ensure the first peaceful transfer of power since 1960. Negotiators led by Congo's Catholic Bishops' Conference spent weeks in tense talks before an agreement was reached. Congolese President Joseph Kabila will step down after elections to be held by the end of 2017 under the last-minute deal struck by political parties on December the 31st. Under the deal, Kabila will be unable to change the constitution to allow him to stay in power for a third term. Kabila's mandate ran out on December the 19th, but the authorities have effectively extended it until 2018 because the government said it could not arrange elections before then. The parties agreed that Kabila will appoint a prime minister from the country's main opposition bloc to oversee the transition, a major sticking point in the final stages of the talks. But neither Kabila nor the country's leading opposition leader, Etienne Sikkedi, are expected to sign the deal, raising concerns about whether it will be respected. Election experts also question the feasibility of organizing presidential, legislative and provincial assembly elections together by the end of 2017. And a terrible road accident in western Kenya earlier today has left 11 people dead, and among them two students, one heading to a primary school in the region and the other to a boarding school. This happened in Kisumu County. Its commissioner, Mohamed Malim, said the driver of the 14th city minibus had lost control before veering off the road and rolling a couple of times and then hitting a culvert. Seven of the survivors who were in critical condition were rushed to the Jermogi Odinga Heating and Raffle Hospital for emergency treatment. The vehicle, which is only supposed to carry 14 people, is said to have carried more than 18 people at the time of the accident. The county commissioner has issued a stern warning saying that vehicles found carrying excess passengers will be impounded and the owner prosecuted. And in Egypt, the Interior Ministry says police have arrested four people in connection with the bombing that killed dozens of Christians at the Coptic Christian Cathedral in Cairo. At least 25 people, mostly women and children, were initially killed when a bomb exploded in chapel adjoining St. Mark's Cathedral, and that's the seat of the Coptic Papacy. The Health Ministry said on Wednesday that the death toll had climbed to 28. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi said after the attack that the bomber was a man wearing a suicide vest and that security forces were seeking two more people believed to be involved. The Interior Ministry said in a statement it had arrested one of the two along with three others who were part of the same cell and who planned to carry out more attacks. One man is still on the run, it said, without saying when they were arrested. Police also seized improvised explosive devices shotguns and ammunition with those it arrested. A doctor in Cameroon has found she can do more beyond the walls of a hospital or a clinic. She can offer advice and medical information to thousands of people online, probably helping to save the lives of thousands more. Here's a story. Today we want to talk about stroke. Wait to be stroke. Susan Ejemma, also known as Dr. C in Cameroon, is a medical doctor who's working to transform the way people in the country access information on their health. She gives health advice online as a way to counter infrastructure bottlenecks in the country where access to doctors remains a challenge. Dr. C specializes in internal medicine and cardiology and uses short videos to offer information and advice on how people can prevent and manage diseases as well as receive treatment. Dr. C calls what she does medication. The topics covered are mostly done in Pidgin English, which is widely spoken in parts of West Africa. The physician started filming videos in 2014 after a colleague asked if she was interested in filming health segments. When he approached me, I was like, brilliant idea. I already have lectures in hypertension, lectures in diabetes and Pidgin. We could just start. Why don't we start? 
So I remember the very first day we started, I actually left from night duty. I was tired, but I had to do that video. I was so excited about it. And since then, um, taking watch, all the things I ever did in front of the camera became a new, became my world. Cameroon is struggling with a shortage of medical professionals with fewer than two doctors for every 10,000 people, making it difficult to provide adequate medical services. Dr. C wants to help fill the gap in medical services through her program. At the Baptist Hospital in Kumba, Dr. Tata Devine says doctors in the country in general are overwhelmed and that he even sees 60 patients a day sometimes. He's skeptical, though, about online healthcare programs, saying this may discourage patients from going to hospital for proper diagnosis. You really need a medical personnel, a trained doctor, to clerk you, examine, and then maybe do some tests to be able to say, okay, this person is having a kind of chronic typhoid which has, kind of, which has uh, perforated his intestines, and that can be an emergency. It's an emergency because it can easily lead to septicemia and many other things set in and then. So, uh, talking about going online to seek for medical uh, attention, it's quote-unquote good, but it's, it can be very harmful too. The challenges come um, as poverty, lack of information, lack of infrastructure, because even if someone in a village is informed what, about what is going on in their body, they know what they should do, what they shouldn't do, if they need professional care, they will have to live from that village sometimes to go somewhere else because the infrastructure is not there. And even when that health care is in the neighboring urban setting, they might not even have the road. Dr. C also holds seminars and trains doctors for free whenever she visits the country. She recently gave a talk on non-communicable diseases attended by a number of health practitioners. Still ahead on Network Africa, a critical milestone has been reached and that could bring us closer to malaria being eradicated. Do stay with us.